How will Mashiach make peace in the Middle East? We know that Mashiach will bring peace throughout the whole world. Actually, it says that the first thing Mashiach will start with will be making peace. He will cause that all the nations that are fighting each other will beat their swords into plowshares. But we also know particularly that Mashiach will secure, will make sure that there's security and there's peace with the Jewish people in the land of Israel. How will Mashiach accomplish that? If we look historically throughout the history of the Jewish people, the height of the Jewish people, the time that they flourished the most physically and spiritually was during the time of Shlomo Yamalach, King Solomon. His father, David HaMalach, was the one that fought many battles surrounding the land of Israel, and he ensured security for the Jewish people. And he was told that he wanted to build the temple, he wanted to build the base HaMittash. He was told by the prophet in the name of Hashem that he cannot build a temple because he spilled a lot of blood. And therefore, King Solomon, King Shlomo, who will be his son, will be named Shlomo, he will, he will be a man of peace, and he will be the one that will build a temple. It's explained that David and Shlomo brought, both brought peace for the Jewish people, at least during their, the time of their reign, the time of their kingdom. David HaMalach's peace was brought through many wars. He fought many battles. He was victorious over the nations that tried to harm the Jewish people. And therefore, they gave up. They decided that it is not worthwhile for them anymore to fight the Jewish people. And therefore, there was a peace. They were, so to say, terrified from... King David's success at battle, so they gave up on their ambitions to hurt the Jewish people. In the days of Shlomo HaMalach, King Solomon on the other hand, he didn't have to fight any wars. All the nations on their own, they respected, they appreciated the wisdom, the teachings of King Solomon, which more particularly, more from a, from an inner mystical perspective, they appreciated the godliness that shone through the holy temple that King Solomon built. That the, the, the godly energy that was radiating through the kingdom of Shlomo HaMalach and therefore they not it wasn't that they had any ambition to hurt the Jewish people but they put away their plans because they were overwhelmed overwhelmed by the force of King Shlomo on the contrary they respected they appreciated they on their own sought out the peace and the welfare of the Jewish people and we even find the famous story of the Queen of Shiva who lived on a very distant land and she came to King Shlomo because she heard of his wisdom people were drawn from far and wide, many different nations across the world came to hear, to learn, and to glean from the wisdom of King Shlomo. So there was peace without war. There wasn't a peace where Shlomo had to overwhelm the nations. On the contrary, they themselves were interested in making peace. They were inherently peaceful to Jewish people. However, King Shlomo's reign didn't last forever. And towards the end of his life, there was already some division, some split. There were certain nations that already rebelled, that already were shaking off the, the impressions. They were shaking off the power that King Shlomo exerted around the world. And definitely after he passed away, when the Jewish kingdom split into two between the successor of Shlomo, his son Rechavam, and the other Jewish um, tribes which started their own kingdom, the kingdom of the ten tribes, at that point the nations of the world no longer had the same respect and the same love for the Jewish people. And as time went on, battles ensued and different situations arose where the nations of the world were very hostile for the Jewish people. Mashiach will be the one that will bring about peace to the, for the Jewish people and for the world in a lasting way. Mashiach will bring a peace that was even deeper than the peace that Shlomo HaMalach brought. How will Mashiach achieve this? The reason is that Shlomo HaMalach's peace did not last because Shlomo HaMalach was not able to transform the very nature of existence. Yes, he taught, he, he bestowed wisdom. People came from far and wide to hear their wisdom. But first of all, they were only inspired by Shlomo when they came. They had to come and hear his wisdom. Many people didn't come. Many people weren't inspired. Furthermore, even though the wisdom taught them, the King Shlomo's wisdom and the teachings that he taught them and the holiness that they experienced in the temple had an effect on them, it did not permeate their very existence. It did not permeate who they actually were. It didn't change the very, the very fundamental nature of their existence. And therefore, eventually, they were able to drift away, to slip away, and to revert their old hostile approach to the Jewish people. Mashiach's accomplishment will be far greater than King Shlomo. 
Mashiach's accomplishment will be that he will transform the very nature of existence itself. Mashiach will reveal within the world a recognition that Hashem Echad, that Eimed Movade, there is nothing besides Hashem. Mashiach will bring about that awareness, even within the physical realm of, re- of reality itself, that there is nothing separate from God Himself. God Almighty, the truth of Hashem's existence, is, a, is the real existence of all created beings. When someone realizes that, when the world will realize that the true existence is Hashem, God Almighty Himself, the essence of godliness, they were, they're not going to be able to fight the Jewish people. They will have no desire to fight the Jewish people. They will have no desire to fight the Torah. They will have no desire to fight God because they are going to realize that this is who they inherently are. They are all one with God. And this, this awareness, this perception is going to be a new innovation that Mashiach will bring about in the world, changing the very fabric of existence, making the whole existence become aware of what they really are. They're, they, they're, the, the, the whole existence is a manifestation of godly energy. And therefore, the peace that Mashiach will bring within the world will be everlasting, as long as the vision only exists when people exist on their own, when people are independent of each other. The vision between the Jewish people and the nations of the world only exists when people try to fight the truth of God, the truth of Torah, and they feel that they want to, they're separate from it and they want to fight it. Mashiach will bring this awareness into the world, how everything is really godliness, and therefore the peace that Mashiach will bring into the world will be everlasting. It will, be, it will transform the world at its core. As the verse says, as Uz Eper Chalamim Safa Bruda, that at the time of Mashiach, all the nations will be transformed. They will all serve Hashem in unity in one clear language. They will all realize, even where throughout the world, wherever they are scattered, they will they will on their own appreciate the truth of what their existence is all about. That they're one with Hashem, and therefore they're going to be at peace with each other, and at peace with Hashem, and at peace with the Jewish people. It is through learning and appreciating this even now, coming to the realization and living up to the ideals that we are not something separate from Hashem. There's nothing outside of God's energy, that everything in the world is just a manifestation of Hashem's energy that is bring, bringing it into creation. And as our as the verse says, Emeid Mulvadi, there's nothing besides Hashem. It is through internalizing this concept that will bring about that we will truly feel it and experience it in the most complete way with the coming of Mashiach, and when we will achieve ultimate peace with the coming of Mashiach, speedily in our days. Amen.